We call it Zombie Takeout. The top of the primordial ecosystem. A god for all intensive purposes. A monster. What's up? Welcome to episode 272 of Zombie Takeout, the Be Moving Cult Movie Podcast. I'm Uncle John. And I'm Scotto. And before we get to this week's movie, we've got some listeners submitted. Actually, we've got quite a bit of listeners submitted, all in reference to, well, all posted on last week's episode, but in reference to the godzilla in general. The epic, longest trilogy in the history of Zombie Takeout to put together. Well, yeah, to get to, at least. Um <laughs> If you count the Christmas uh, vacation, mm. this trilogy has taken 10 weeks to complete. Well, we had an impromptu trilogy crowbarred in before it. Sure. Um, Bruce Hardy said, go, go, Godzilla, because I quoted uh, the song in my post. I said, oh, no, there goes Tokyo. Roberto Suarez said, a great story to cap off the godzilla is the graphic novel Godzilla, the Half-Century War. A fantastic gra- graphic novel that chronicles 14 years of Godzilla's exploits from the point of view of one man. It's a bit like Godzilla meets Forrest Gump, but good. <laughs> Check it out if you have a chance. And he That's linked a this great to idea it. for a movie. What the fuck? Godzilla meets Forrest Gump? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that would be interesting. And then he burnt it down again. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm just kind of seeing Godzilla meets Bambi, but with Forrest Gump, but... Having Forrest Gump actually explain it would be hilarious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then he crushed down another building. <laughs> Again. Mm-hmm. And Matt Gorenson said, I can't believe you didn't mention in sequels and remakes Godzilla Final Wars, which is a straight-up bonkers movie which crams in Godzilla and 15, 15 other monsters, also oh, aliens. Course. But, I mean, that's just what they did, though. They just kept throwing, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. other monsters on the... Uh... Mm-hmm. Until it became a royal rumble. <laughs> yeah. And and I mentioned that I, I get the sequels and remake section straight out of uh Wikipedia. So if it's not there, I, I'm not probably not gonna mention it. And I'm still not I'm and I'm warming to Godzilla, but I'm still not like a Godzilla fan. So I I'd heard of Final Wars, but I wasn't familiar with it. We could take like half an hour just rattling off every Godzilla titles, yeah. Yeah. And the other thing was I've watched a lot of Godzilla movies, hmm. but I have no idea what any of them are called, or uh-huh. uh, for most of them are called, until right. like we reviewed them later on. Right. But as a kid, it was just, you're flipping around, oh, cool, a Godzilla movie. Like, they <laughs> never had any titles. It was hmm. just a Godzilla movie. Right. And Danny Meeks on Google Plus echoed Matt's sentiments, or actually Matt echoed Danny's sentiments, because Danny posted first. Saying, really wish y'all could have watched Godzilla Final Wars, one of my favorites in 100% pure action insanity. We're going to have to get to Final Wars at some point. Sounds like it, yeah. Yeah. Just to see 15 other monsters. I I, I kind of want to see that. I think it's the logical conclusion. I mean, we can't do that many more of these. Right, yeah. It, we can't do it next week because we've got something that we've been wanting to do for a while. Actually, we promised somebody will do it. <laughs> So we'll have to get to it sometime down the road, hopefully this year. All right, so without any further ado, that brings us to this week's movie, which is from 2014, of course, Godzilla. And that brings us to the impromptu plot summary, sponsored by Second Chances, because you can learn a lot in 16 years. And also brought to you by Atomic Energy, the gift that keeps on giving. Mm -hmm. It's a real uh, time stopper, apparently, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, Anyway, uh, so we have um, all these intros are kind of blending together. They're very, yeah. very similar. A Godzilla movie is a Godzilla movie. Right. Like the, you know, the World War II footage, the, mm-hmm. you know, the the radiation. This and, one was uh, very similar to the Emmerich movie. Yes. Very similar. With one slight difference. You actually saw Godzilla in the intro. I loved the, you know, when they were doing the, you know, they spliced Godzilla in with the uh, atomic bomb mm-hmm. testing. And then, of course, explain later what was really going on. Um, 
but yeah, so you, you're you're faced with the same thing. There's a little bit of Darwin, you know, mm-hmm. which was a nice touch. for good measure. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that was in the other ones, but uh, so uh, th- this is kind of a unique uh, movie because they talk about well, first, you know, of course, you have the pre-disaster, you know, movie. Mm-hmm. Where every life is is normal, you know. Oh, you know, it's Dad's birthday. And I made a sign, mm-hmm. and and then and then, um, well, well, shit gets real. Yeah. Um, Most expensive red shirt ever. You um, you, you kill the mom right within the first mm-hmm. couple minutes of the movie. Um, and Cranston, man, holy shit! What a what a what a solid performance! Oh, yeah. I thought, as always. <laughs> Yeah, but you don't get to see him push like that usually. Yeah, uh, well, true. I mean, then again, I I've missed a lot of Breaking Bad. I haven't mm. seen a lot of the last half of the uh, series. I've actually only seen the beginning of the first episode, and it wasn't for me. But I've seen him in a number of other things, and he's always brilliant. I kind of had to tap out after a while because it just kept, you know, it was just, mm. I didn't want to feel this way. You know, <laughs> yeah. it was just kind of like that. It was just too much. I, mm. I just had to tap. But anyway, um, so then they, they flash forward 15 years later. Uh, they almost made it look like he died in yeah. the, the mess, too. Because, like, after she dies, the whole power plant that they work at just mm-hmm. came crashing yeah. down. And, well, he was in it. So mm-hmm. you kind of thought he went, too. I kind I of... Thinking- I kind of kept waiting for him to die throughout the movie because I've seen this one before, but it's been like a year and change. So I forgot exactly when it happened and it got kind of distracting because I knew it was coming. Well, yeah, it was the one thing I knew that was spoiled because so many people said it was kind of mm-hmm. like um, Drew Barrymore in Scream right. where he was gone. Ridic- she was gone ridiculously early. Right, yeah. Not so much here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, so you assumed he was dead from the beginning and he mm-hmm. was just going to be, the, the son was going to be orphaned, but it turns out he survived somehow and uh, he's been obsessed with what happened to the power plant because it just didn't add up to him. The, the seismic energy, the way it was that they, you know, he believed they were under attack. Now the, the little uh, trickery they give is that you believe it's Godzilla, of course, mm-hmm. That came and did this. Especially since in the very first scene, they find an egg underground, a giant egg. So you believe, you know, Godzilla came in and just fucked it all up. And and they're going to, you know, it's going to be like a Moby Dick sort of thing where he's (laughs) going to hunt the great white lizard. (laughs) And, uh, but when it comes out as like a moth... (laughs) I'm like, wow, or, or actually it looked a lot like the alien from Aliens. with wings. Bit, Yeah, it was kind of a cross between the Xenomorph and uh, Mothra. So I'm looking at this, I'm like, wow, that's the shittiest Godzilla I think I've ever seen. <laughs> it's my first reaction. <laughs> like, hey, wait a minute, it flies. What the fuck? It... Oh, <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> what the hell is this? I thought we were watching Godzilla. <laughs> um. Godzilla. He really waited to introduce the monster. Yeah. In fact, uh, it, it's very strange because he just kind of arrives on the scene and uh, and all hell breaks loose. But, um, yeah, he's he's been waiting for this thing to, I guess, hatch for I don't know how many years. Mm-hmm. Or for, I guess, for 15 years. And... Uh, it's strange because they ca- ca- refer to him as a predator, but it's more looks. It looks more like a turf battle <laughs> than yeah. anything else. Mm-hmm. This planet isn't big enough <laughs> for the three of them because uh-huh. yes, there's a mate right. um, who's even so, bigger. Yes, so they chase this thing, including with Godzilla. Godzilla is full on good guy in this. Yes. Yeah. Which is really strange that, I mean, he just, he doesn't, he causes a lot of havoc. He, he causes <laughs> a tsunami. That's largely just because of his size. Right. But he is, uh, he's after this thing and it's, um, it's, it seems like a personal vendetta almost, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah. 
And uh, yeah, they chase them across from Hawaii to, well, from Japan to Hawaii mm -hmm. to San Francisco, of course, where the wife mm -hmm. of our protagonist is living. And, um, well, Vegas gets fucked up too. Yeah, and, they go a little uh, inland and then come back out to. Uh, well, yeah, they they're meeting and you got the. Um, oh right, the the the, the mate was underground in, in your Vegas. The right, the female is coming from Vegas. Right, so they're meeting up at San Francisco, mm -hmm. and um, I think we could say hilarity ensues. Mm -hmm. And I was really confused by seeing Godzilla in the title sequence at first, until they explained it and. They they changed the war a little bit, and I'm really not sure how to feel about it. Instead of Godzilla being the result of atomic testing, he's been around since prehistoric times. He's just an ancient species. And the Mudo, as they're calling it, yes. the, the uh, massive... Um, Non-Mothra. Yeah, yeah. Um, something terrestrial organism. Unidentif massive unidentified terrestrial organism. Really? That's what it stood for? Yes. Um, they said it in one scene. Um, that was created by the atomic testing because they feed on radiation and that's presumably what made them so large. But they said they were trying to kill Godzilla. Yeah, but with, with the, um, but they're right. It wasn't nuclear testing or atomic testing. It was actually an attempt to kill Godzilla. You're right. right. <laughs> Which I thought was really creative mm -hmm. that like, why would we be just launching shit out in the South yeah. Pacific like that? That never really made much sense, <laughs> but oh, well, um, we, we ended up creating the Mudo, which... I guess is actually a better point about atomic, you know, weaponry than than the original idea because th this time we are trying to use it to destroy Godzilla, and we created the thing that Godzilla saves us from. Yeah, I think the the one real argument I have with this movie is that it was kind of it was cashing in on stuff that had happened just a few years earlier from it. Yeah, yeah. You know, Fukushima. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, tsunamis. And speaking of um, Fukushima, the scene when the reactor crumbled was just terrifying. Oh, yeah. This is how you use CG. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> because you see the reactor crumbling in the beginning, which is terrifying. And then in a later scene, Godzilla kind of falls against a skyscraper and it just falls to pieces. I, I mean, I guess the other problem is there doesn't seem to be many consequences there, there doesn't seem to be the equal and opposite reaction to yeah, action true. in this. Newton really just takes a holiday <laughs> for well, two hours. Well, you don't really hear a lot, about, a lot about people dying, but there's a lot of destruction and a lot of people running from it. There is a lot of death in this, actually. If It, it happens off, off camera, yeah, of right. course. But, I mean, they yes. They allude to it more than they can say it to a lot of people dying although yeah. it seems like there are a lot of people that survived that nuclear power plant just collapsing which True. is really like <laughs> how how was the other scientists still there too <laughs> yeah. like uh Setekawa, yeah was it just those three that died in the, from the uh the breach well i think it was yeah it was just the, the team that was locked in the room that was actually breaching i think everybody else got out alive now, that's all well and good, but when the entire plant collapses, yeah, yeah. I think the breach is going to come <laughs> outside of that. Right, right. I don't think you're going to be able to contain the breach mm -hmm. when and the entire power plant comes collapsing. Yeah, down. and it's not going to be free of radiation 16 years later, or 15 years later. I wonder if they were implying that Muto uh, ate the radiation. Oh, okay. I think that huh. they said that's why they let it live uh -huh. was because it was that makes sense. It was taking up the radiation, mm. and they were worried about if they killed it, there was going to be a big fallout. Right. However, it, when it was just placed there, the fallout from that thing going off, all those kids seeing it from the school, like <laughs> I mean, holy shit! Uh -huh. Yeah, the entire town would have been fried. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that whole thing in the beginning, it was really tense for an expository flashback. Oh, yeah. Because it was really just set up. And, and they went really intense with it, which was surprising. I, I would have liked it for a bit more of 
you know, when they're asking him if he wanted to go after it, to be like, that motherfucker killed my mother and father. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And Cranston actually looks younger in the 2014 scenes than he did in the 99 scenes. <laughs> I'm not sure how that works. Yeah. I mean, you can't really de-age somebody. It takes a lot of work to do that. So I, I, I'm okay with them just st- sticking a wig on him and saying he's younger. But he actually looked younger in the later scenes. They could have gotten Frankie Muniz to uh, ha, yeah. play Ford Brody. Uh-huh. Speaking of which, Ford Brody sounds like a car that a frat boy would drive. Uh, I was wondering if he was any relation to Ford Prefect. Yeah, I also thought of Ford Prefect, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, an inconspicuous name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and I got to say, the movie doesn't really rely on cliches that much. Which is a relief for a Godzilla movie, except the conspiracy theorist as Harbinger. They 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 did play that. I mean, maybe not a conspiracy conspiracy theorist exactly because he was right, but he well, was still the crazy conspiracy theorist who played Harbinger. There, there was <laughs> Harbinger on line three. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was just taking a drink when you said that. He was. Uh, I mean, he was there, and and it's funny that. When he's saying all this stuff, and the scientists are just looking at their what they've got in front of them and listening to what they're saying, <laughs> like, mm. oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, he's right. <laughs> and so that whole like scene is there anybody you need to take with you? <laughs> mm. That guy, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I really liked how they just unceremoniously killed him. Oh, you know, he, he survived a couple of things, and then. He just dies on a gurney out of nowhere. You know, well, yeah, it's it's very. It, it was very uh, non, you know, mm-hmm. dramatic. You yeah. know, there was it was just it just happened. Now this is the thirtieth film in the Godzilla franchise. Holy shit! The first film in Legendary's Godzilla Kong cinematic universe. We'll get more into that in sequels and remakes. And the second film to be completely produced in a Hollywood studio or by a Hollywood studio. Of course, the rather being the 98 version. Can we all just agree to forget about the Roland Emmerich version? Can we just forget about Roland Emmerich? Well, that would be nice too. And at the premiere of this one, some Toho executives and staff members were said to have broken down in joy at the portrayal of Godzilla. (laughs) No doubt um, scarred by the Emmerich version. It isn't often where he just comes out as as the good guy right from the beginning. I mean, they do go after him a bit in this, yeah, yeah. but well, the military you know was firing him because he's this big thing that's destroying shit. I mean, but you just know he's good from the beginning because mm-hmm. he doesn't. He only is going after them. Like in the uh, last version that we did, yeah, they mm-hmm. were saying, "Whoa, you know, he's taking out energy sources." It's kind of weird that they did the same yeah. uh, gimmick with the enemy creature. Mm-hmm eating energy i think this was very influenced by um uh 2000 yeah oh definitely that was the one that kind of showed us okay you you fucked up in 98 now we're gonna show you how it's done and we borrowed a lot from that but i gotta say i did like the story around the uh the humans Mm -hmm. and normally in, in these movies that story usually sucks. And as I mentioned last time, that really should be kind of the centerpiece of the movie because Godzilla is just a force of nature. Yes. You know, it's about the people surviving the thing. And and really, I mean, yeah, Brian Cranston does the trick of pulling you in. I Mm -hmm. mean, I know I was, I was hooked from that scene where he had to close the blast door. Uh Yeah. I'm not married. I'm not currently. You know, I haven't been in a relationship in years, and the the thought of having to do that just disturbs the hell out of me. <laughs> of course, geez. it's crazy. He, his wife was on the other side of the doors when he had to close them. All well, right. I mean, you kind of knew it was going to happen, mm-hmm. but you didn't know if they were going to do a whole "oh, she miraculously survives" kind of thing, or she just gets out in the nick of time. Somehow. Exactly. But but they set the tone for it. Uh, they're they're you know. There are no miraculous escapes, even though there are miraculous oh, escapes yeah, later in the movie. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> there are still a lot of people mm-hmm. that get fucking killed. I mean, yeah. the tsunami alone. Well, I mean, Ford blows up the eggs and gets thrown by the explosion about 20 feet and walks away. 
And then, of course, the atomic bomb. Mm-hmm. And why is o- Oakland even gets fucked in this, man? Yeah. We'll just launch a detonated outside of Oakland. Like, wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> the Admiral was a crackhead. Mm-hmm. Now, overall, I like the Mudo design. Yeah, yes, it was obviously um, Mothra, but it was fairly original. Except for the little tiny arms in the middle. You know, he's got these, you know, wings and these hind legs that are huge. And these little tiny arms in the middle. Yeah, basically T-Rex arms. I can't think of what they would be there for from an evolutionary standpoint. It doesn't make sense. Wow. And the female doesn't have them. All of hers are the same size. An evolutionary perspective. How how does one develop an electromagnetic pole? Well, yeah, right. And and breathe blue flame. yeah, Godzilla's fire is blue in this one, which I, I kind of liked. It was a nice touch. I liked how, like, the moves he would make in fighting. Mm-hmm. I mean, it wasn't just a, a clumsy attack. It was just, I'm going to fucking grab you by the shoulders, <laughs> yeah. and then I'm going to breathe this right in your face. Yeah. <laughs> we're, dead. I, we're jumping ahead, but when he killed the second Mudo, basically by vom- vomiting blue flame straight into its mouth <laughs> until it literally became a cinder. That was awesome. Yes, that was one hell of a scene. And when Godzilla made landfall, just going back, you know, kind of sequential, it was classic Godzilla because you had the throngs of people running through the streets screaming. I I was half expecting one of them to point and say, it's Godzilla. (laughs) Speaking of the name, um, uh, Dr. Setakawa, Ken Watanabe's character, calls it Gojira at first, which I loved. Uh, and he was actually the one who suggested doing that, the actor. Except later they do call it Godzilla, and I don't know why it changed. If the first yeah, guy to name uh, it called it Gogeta. Consistency didn't seem to be a... Uh, <laughs> yeah. They missed that a little bit. Me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and why is there a reaction in the rain shot in both American Godzilla movies? Oh, you know, yeah. we had someone seeing the monster and their eyes drop, you know, falling out of their head. In in the rain in both movies, it just seemed really um, repetitive. Although I did like the school bus scene on the bridge. You know, I didn't realize that was actually the Golden Gate Bridge. I assumed because uh, when I looked up at IMDb, they're referring to it as the Golden Gate Bridge. Mm. But it's in San Francisco, so I just kind of assumed. I I thought it was the Bay Bridge, which isn't like which isn't the you know uh-huh, rust right. color. It's just more of like a silver color. And that's that's the bridge that would take you to Oakland. Ah, okay. <laughs> but they keep referring to it as the Golden Gate Bridge. And I just assumed that it was just the Bay Bridge. Maybe they just referred to it as that because that's the only bridge most people know from San Francisco, myself included. You know, if there's a bridge in San Francisco, I'm just going to assume Golden Gate. But the color didn't even seem like the Golden Gate. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'd have to go back and like see it because I just assumed it was the gray because it's they're they're both suspension bridges. Uh, yeah. And the scene with the bus on the bridge, I love that he he hauls ass to get the kids off the bridge before <laughs> it collapses, and he he has to stop for a cable falling in the middle of the road. <laughs> he doesn't make it initially. I mean, it was temporary. He eventually did get off the bridge, but I liked how they stopped him for a bit. Well, why would they not allow people? To get out. Why well, would they stop traffic on the bridge? Why would they have a lane open to get people out first? You, you need to build tension. <laughs> well, yeah. But the military or the cops are just standing around blocking off the bridge. <laughs> it's mm. like, um, oh, these people might want to get out. <laughs> well, they yes. have to get those tanks down the side lane. They need to fucking evacuate. So mm-hmm. you, you close one lane and half the other lane for them to get out. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of building tension, according to Brian Cranston, Gareth Edwards, the director, was inspired by the f- shark film Jaws. The film does not immediately show the beast, but rather build up to its appearance while delivering an eerie and terrifying off-screen presence, unquote. In, hom- in homage to Jaws... <laughs> The main protagonist have the na- has the name of Brody after the film's protagonist, after a Jaws oh, protagonist. right, right. He was named after Brody from Jaws. Godzilla's eyes are like Jaws' eyes. <laughs> and the design of Godzilla in this one 
was inspired by bears and Komodo dragons. In particular, his face is influenced by the head of bears, dogs, and eagles. Edward said the eagle has a lot of nobility. It made him feel very majestic and noble. I can kind of see the eagle, maybe a little dog. I'm not seeing much bear. So can we get like a, a monster movie on one of those lizards with like the flaps on the sides of the head? Yes. <laughs> it, just, it just gets frightened of everybody. It just starts <laughs> running away. Well... Just, you know, just stampedes over buildings and shit like ah well the monster the alien monster um orgo or whatever it was called in 2000 did that have that just... did have that thing with its mouth that was kind of like that you know the reverse phallic <laughs> but i would like to see that where the monster is afraid of us more than we're afraid of it mm. now this one was interesting for a Godzilla movie for one reason. It was actually scary and tense at times, and I've never seen a Godzilla movie like that. I think they're supposed to be that way, but they never are. Hmm. Yeah, it's more... In the past, it's more just been about watching the smackdown between mm -hmm. Godzilla and whoever. Right. And, and this one, there was a little Hitchcock thrown mm -hmm. in for good measure. And I think that must have been what the first one was like when it was originally released in Japan. It was probably, I, 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 I'm sure it wasn't meant to be campy. It, they just became that when they you know, were imported because of the bad well, dubs and whatnot. And of course the rubber suits. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, I loved that was like the newscast. Instead of just showing us straight on the battle, you mm -hmm. just kind of see them beating the shit out of each other <laughs> on the newscast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did they get a camera close enough? Speaking of which, okay, if if um, Mudo eats radiation, how do you get close enough to it to be in the same shot without getting horribly irradiated? Kind of like with um, the Rowan Emmerich version. Yeah, the whole science of Mudo does not make any sense. Yeah, no, no. I mean, there's stuff that, you know, restarting, and just the fact the whole EPM attack in the first place yeah. is just ridiculous. Yeah, the EMP attack. Yeah, that's... There are animals that use electricity as a weapon. I'm thinking, I think it's stingrays that do. But not on that scale. I mean, it's that's obviously the science fiction of it. I guess it would have been something if it was something that it wasn't aware it had. Mm -hmm. I'm, electric it's... eels, I'm thinking, not stingrays. Yes, Continue. yes. Where it, it just, you know went off when it got frightened or something yeah yeah that would be interesting but uh yeah no it seemed like it, it knew what it was doing like <laughs> yeah. aha all the electrical things are right here right let's go and there's also a scene that i have to call out because it was a little ridiculous for even for a godzilla movie they just haloed into um san francisco halo jumped you know and they're trying to get get to the bomb that's supposed to blow up the monsters right and they end up on this street with Godzilla on one end and Mudo on the other. <laughs> and they're just sitting there watching them. Wouldn't you, like, get to the nearest alley to get out of the way? <laughs> that is the last place you want to be. I mean, yeah, I love that it was just a street fight. Yeah, basically. Yeah, you know, the first time where Godzilla catches up to him and he's just screaming in his face. <laughs> you could just the subtitle could just be like, It is on, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just going through my trivia. With regard to what you said about Godzilla being good, Edwards describes Godzilla as an anti hero. Godzilla Godzilla is definitely a representation of the wrath of nature. The theme is man versus nature, and Godzilla is certainly the nature side of it. You can't win that fight. Nature is always going to win. And that's what the subtext of the movie is about. He's the punishment we deserve. <laughs> but yet he was basically playing, you know, detective and, and waiting just for this one threat to happen so he could go kick its ass. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a territorial battle between them. Because, mm. I mean, he doesn't eat the <laughs> any of them. No, no. It's not food. <laughs> You know, and he's, you know, he's just flat on, you know, aggressive and mm -hmm. ready to uh, throw down. Right. And unfortunately, there was another thing in this movie that also rem that reminded me of the um, Emmerich version. There's a scene late in the movie where they find eggs. Well, they were Mudo's eggs. Uh, they and were it, in one place and contained. Yeah. Like... And it wasn't a nice small sequel. Um, it gave um, 
forward a chance to actually do something in the movie. He hadn't really done much up until that point. Right. I think that's the only thing he does that, you know, affects the conflict is he blows up the, the uh, Mudo eggs. Well, and he gets the, the boat to yeah, yeah, yeah. go really quickly <laughs> out to sea. Now, the ending is an interesting head fake, especially in light of Emmerich's movie, because it looks like they kill Godzilla at first. Of course they... Uh, you, I mean, come on. <laughs> I bought it. No. Godzilla doesn't die. Well, they killed him in the Emmerich version, so I thought maybe they made the same mistake again. Oh. Well, Godzilla doesn't die. Any competent filmmaker yeah. would never kill Godzilla. And and Gareth Edwards certainly is. Um, his previous film, Monsters, is brilliant. Uh, and he's making uh, the Rogue One movie. So, yeah, very competent. And... I, I I just thought maybe it was a studio thing. Maybe it had to be, you know, America kills Godzilla. But fortunately, he doesn't die. He's just... Uh, Tired. He's knocked out for a while. Um, God, you know, if Godzilla were to die in a movie, it would have to be a lot more dramatic than just... Oh, yeah. Man. He, he, a building falls on him, he collapses, and he's just kind of laying there for a while, sleeping. Uh, yeah, he just took on both of them. Yeah. And then a, liter- a, bu- a building literally falls on top of him. Right. Oh, uh, last bit of trivia. Andy Serkis provided consulting work on the film's mocap sequences. I'm guessing that was Godzilla. He was mocapped, which explains the better fighting. Oh, man. Kind of getting sick of Andy Serkis. <laughs> 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 Holy shit. Can we get another actor to do that? Well, he, it's, he's kind of got the market cornered. Um, <laughs> he doesn't have to. Yeah. There are other people out there. <laughs> well, that's how it is when you're starting a new business, you know, because this is kind of a new thing. And, you know, the one guy dominates it until, you know, the other people kind of come up and into the ranks and start doing it. Hopefully I mean, soon. Uh, Ahmed Best, you know, I guess. Wow. Is, uh... That was a, he, his, he unfortunately picked the wrong role. <laughs> I don't think he's ever going to do it again. No. <laughs> All right. I'm done with my notes. Yeah, I am too. On to sequels and remakes. You think they could make a sequel to this? Well, they're going you to. You think they could make multiple Godzilla yeah. movies? Um, the film's success pr- prompted Toho to produce a re- reboot of their own and Legendary to proceed with sequels and a shared cinematic franchise. So it's going to be a shared universe between Legendary and, and Toho. With the second Godzilla film set to be released on June 8th, 2018, uh, Gareth Edwards has to do Rogue One first. He's going to stick with this, this series as well. Yeah. While a crossover film with King Kong is targeted for a 2020 release. It has been a while since Godzilla and King Kong have yeah. thrown down. And the last King Kong we got wasn't good. Yeah. Huh? On May 22nd, Legendary announced plans for a trilogy with Edwards attached to direct. The sequel is expected to go into production after Edwards has completed filming on Rogue One. And at 2014 Comic-Con, Legendary and Edwards confirmed that they have had acquired other Toho properties, including Mothra, Rodan, and King Ghidorah. Hopefully they'll do something better with Ghidorah. <laughs> yeah, just, what? <laughs> yeah. What kind of uh, modernization can they do with the uh, the singing uh, twins? <laughs> yeah, how would that work in a in a contemporary setting? Hopefully, they'll just remove them. <laughs> They'd be rappers instead. Oh, God. Well, no, this isn't the Emmerich version. This is Gareth Edwards. So, although it would be interesting to see you Uva Ball take a shot at it, it would be. Give him Emmerich's script and money and see what he can do. Everybody has a New York accent, huh? Mm-hmm. Under brains. I got your brains right here. <laughs> this one really redeemed it for me uh, after um, uh, Emmerich's. I really liked it. A few little issues, but I'm going four and a half. This This could definitely be my favorite Godzilla movie from beginning to end. Where, you know, most of the the other ones, I'm just in for the fight scene, yeah, yeah. and then I'm out. Right. But this one actually had acting. It actually had a story that that pulls you in, and um, 
I think the only thing it really missed was consistency. Mm. You know, if it had a little bit more of the old science to it, yeah, well. this probably would have been a five. But I'm giving it a four brains. All right, and what have we learned? Uh, Godzuki or get the fuck out. <laughs> and I learned that there really are no small parts. Because Cranston and Godzilla is actually only in it for like eight minutes. Cranston, he, uh, it's like actually almost 40, wasn't it? Well, yeah, he actually has a, a larger role than I'm getting at. Um, also, jo- Julia Binochet is only in the very beginning. Um, yeah, she's the one that checks out. She's the real red shirt, yeah. In the first, like, five minutes. Mm-hmm. All right, so until next time, when we have a double feature, um, Frankenhooker and Gitchy. Gitchy is a short film directed by a mutual friend of ours. He asked us to review it. It looks interesting. It's about a clown who kills with tickling. And think about it. Frankenhooker, we originally wanted to do, like, back in November. But, yeah, better late than never. Well, and, and, and it was originally planned for, I think we I think I initially told Thomas, who, who uh, co-wrote and co-directed Gitchy, that we would get to it by like February, so maybe we're, a month off. We're close. We're yeah, close. We're just well, yeah, because it was off. four weeks. It was uh, three. It was a trilogy and a week off. So yeah. All right. So until then, go to zombietaker.com. Check out the album art, the episode description, of course, the episode itself, which you're already listening to. Links to find us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, and YouTube. Links to subscribe via RSS and iTunes. Please leave us a rating and a review on iTunes. And if you like the show, give us a little word of mouth. Of course, we appreciate the listeners we have, but more would be better. You'll also find the movie list, every movie we've reviewed so far, and every movie we're going to review, in order, I think, until mid-May. Uh, the last one we have um, in order is um, Cannibal Women in the Avocado Jungle of Death. Had to think about that title for a second. Which uh, Mar actually had a scene of on his show a yeah. couple of weeks back. <laughs> this is to Bill Maher what Collision Course was to Jay Leno. It was like I think it was like his birthday show. He was like one of like one of his regrets in life, or, uh-huh. you know. And he said this would be it. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I think it's his only that. acting job. He's just been a comic and a talk show host. Uh, was he in the movie DC Cab? Okay, he might have been. It's been forever since I've seen that. I remember him playing like a keyboard or something, being okay. all like goofy. Yeah. <laughs> You'll also find the request form. If you've got a movie you'd like to hear us review, please leave it on the request form and the recommendations list. I was hopeful. I, I knew I was going to put it on the rec list because, or, or, you know, recommend it because I'd seen it before. I was a little iffy what you were going to do because we do have to wait so long for the monster fight. It, it's the uh, the first Godzilla film that made it. Yeah. Of course, you can email us on take at g- gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 414-368-DTL1. Or for the alphanumerically challenged. They can go fuck themselves. 414-368-9861. A a classic go fuck yourself for a classic Godzilla movie. Yes. Of course, you'll always be calling from the middle of Milwaukee. And until next time, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are. A god. For all intents and purposes. A monster. Until next time, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are.